Right then, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here with uh, the third to last race in this 2001 season. It's the Nürburgring Grand Prix, or European Grand Prix at Nürburgring. And this was our most successful track in 1999, where we got fifth place. Well, Luca Padoa got fifth place, and he damn nearly lapped a Sauber that race. That was a, an exceptional race for our point of view. And also, um, well, Luca Padoa, I mean, I realised this. Not too long ago, but Luca Padoa, who's been hanging over us the entire time, because there he is, that's his car on our main menu screen. So, Luca Padoa has really been shadowing us this entire series, I've realised. But anyway, let's just head on and see if there's any news. Okay, so we got a lot of sponsorship news here, but this is what caught my eye, Rossi's. And obviously, Rossi's used to sponsor us during uh, at least part of the 1999 season. Anyway, well, I made the joke... Right in the first episode, I believe, of how those inline skates are probably faster than our old car, and I don't know why I brought this up. I just I just saw Rossi's, and it just reminded me of that of that illustrious moment right back at the start of the season. But hey, and um, they're now sponsoring Jordan, and to be honest, the Jordan this year isn't terribly quick anyway. So there you go. Right, finally, geez, during. All of this news, a lot of news screens have gone, and Stuart have been rumoured with Vistians, with Magneti Morellis, with Honda PGMs. They've been rumoured with all of them. They were rumoured twice to have Vistians. So, this seems to be the talk of the moment, or what electronics are Stuart going to get? And finally, it's going to be confirmed. Magneti Morellis, yes, so they have gone for the good ones. I was worried they were going to go for Vistians, because they were rumoured to have them. And also the most recent one they were rumoured to have were Honda PGMs. But Stuart, they've got some sense and they've gone for Magneti Morelli Electronics, the best ones on the grid. So, well done to them. Right, so that's it. That is honestly all the news. I mean, there were tons of sponsor news. There were a few rumours, but it was just literally Stuart's Electronics. But really, by this point in the season, pretty much everything is confirmed. Anyway, all the drivers are confirmed. I know that for a fact. And so, yeah, we got the European Grand Prix around Nürburgring. And can Hakkinen wrap up the championship here? It will be kind of a nice way to, for Hakkinen to wrap up the championship here because it was our most successful race back in 1999. And what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, and it's Mercedes-Benz's second home race. So it would, be, it would be quite nice if Hakkinen wrapped up the championship here because... He's had all sorts of issues recently, one of them was in my fault in Belgium, and then in Italy he had a reliability issue. Can Hakkinen wrap up the championship here, or can Coulthard carry on his charge? This is really the talk of the moment, so we've got to find out what on earth is going to happen at the European Grand Prix. Right, I think I've accidentally ruined the game. I mean, look at this. Look, look at, look at the cars. Right, the game for some reason, when I clicked on it to start it, for some reason it did ask me about graphic settings, and I thought I put them on the highest. Apparently, I didn't because. Well, I mean, look, look at this travesty. Well, unfortunately, we're just gonna have to put with this for the remaining. God, this is horrific. God. Yeah, but unfortunately we're going to have to put up with this for the remainder of the episode. Um, I don't think Red Bull are going to be too happy about this, because well, they're incomprehensible, their sponsor. And PlayStation, I don't think they're going to be too happy about this. I think we're basically just running a sponsor-free livery this race. I don't know why, but we've just decided we're going to run a sponsor-free livery. There you go. Um, God. Uh, yeah, I need to try and fix this. Eh? Anyway, yeah, I'll skip to the end of practice. Right, okay, so here we are at the end of practice, and Mick Ackerman, the fastest as per usual. Coulthard, only three temps off. And we have seen, especially in the more recent races, that the gap between Hacken and the Coulthard is smaller than it has been at the start of the season. Plus also, Hackenen is running a newer model barge board, which Coulthard isn't running, so, well, at the moment anyway. So Hackenen has got a slightly better car, I think, so... There you go. Ralph Schumacher, though, the interesting one here. Ralph Schumacher, in practice, 
is the third fastest guy. He's quicker than his brother. Whoever would have thought that whoever would have thought a day would have come in two thousand and one where Michael Schumacher wasn't the best of the rest. But of course Ralph Schumacher is going to be Michael's teammate next year, and if Ralph is really this quick, then well that's good signs for Ferrari next year. Um we saw Ralph was exceptionally quick in the two thousand season as well, so he just kind of dropped off at the start of this season. I mean where's Stephen Watson? Seventh, okay, not too far off then. Um, yeah, and Pedro de la Rosa in the Jordan in fifth. That's very good for for a Jordan with only a Ford Z Tech engine. That's that's a very good result and truly is. Truly's in last. Oh, 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 oh! That's a story. Truly in last, but look, he only did one lap, which means he only did an out lap. Now, the only reason an AI would only do an outlap is because they retired. So it means Truly might have had a driver error, or he could have had a car failure. What would be really bad is if he ran out of engines. So that means, because obviously both arrows aren't here because they've run out of engines. If Truly's run out of engines, then, well, we're only going to see 19 cars start the race, which would be quite worrying, but... I mean, last year we saw at the Malaysian Grand Prix, I think there were only about 12 cars that actually started the race. It was ridiculous. Um, and we might see the same situation this year, especially as there's so many teams with rubbish engines. we got Ford ZTEX, Peugeots, and Patronuses all over the place. I mean, honestly, we might get to Japan at the last race, and it might only be Minardi, Ferrari, and... and uh, and Williams running because all the other teams have got rubbish engines. It, it is entirely possible. Hopefully, it won't happen. But anyway, let's just hand to the qualifying report. And don't worry, the graphics will be fine for the qualifying report because I recorded the cars, the footage for the qualifying report earlier on today or yesterday, rather actually. So the graphics for the qualifying report are fine. You don't have to worry about that. So anyway, let's head on to the qualifying report. Okay, so qualifying has ended for the 2001 European Grand Prix and the results at the top end at the very least are very predictable, very standard and are the same results we've seen in the recent few races but nevertheless I'll take you through them. Mika Hakkinen unsurprisingly takes pole position for the European Grand Prix two and a half tenths of a second quicker than his teammate David Coulthard and as per usual this season Minardi have locked out the front row. Looking at the third row are both Ferraris with Michael Schumacher in third and Heinz Held Frentzen in fourth. With Michael Schumacher two seconds a lap off of David Coulthard and Heinz Held Frentzen a further second and a half off of his teammate Michael Schumacher. Looking at the third row are both Williamses as Ralph Schumacher is in fifth and Stephen Watson is in sixth with Ralph Schumacher a second behind Heinz Howard Frentzen and then Stephen Watson a further second behind his teammate Ralph Schumacher but both Williamses are firmly ahead of the rest of the field and because of that it looks like the top six for the race is pretty much decided already. Jacques Villeneuve in the McLaren is almost a second slower than Stephen Watson with Damon Hill putting in a very good result to get eighth in the Stewarts. Jarno Trulli, who had reliability issues in practice, luckily was able to complete a qualifying lap time as he's in 9th, with Fizzy Keller in the BAR, a lowly 10th, a far cry from where BAR were at the start of the season. Pedro de la Rosa, who's extremely quick in practice, is down in 11th in qualifying, ahead of the Benetton of Rubens Barrichello. Mika Salo's a way off of his teammate, something we didn't see this time last year, as Mika Salo's down in 13th, with Eddie Irvine in extremely lowly 14th, way off of his teammate Jacques Villeneuve. Patrick Lamary shows just how far BAR have fallen in the mid-season aero development race, as he's down in 15th, which is astounding considering Lamary was getting podium finishes at the start of the season. Sarazan in the Benetton is 16th, with Zanardi 17th in the Prost. Zanardi, despite being extremely slow since 1999, 
still qualified ahead of both Saubers, although he was only 1,000th ahead of Alexander Wurtz in the Sauber, with Pedro Diniz exactly one second off of Zanardi's time. Interestingly, Olivier Panis in the Prost was 5.5 seconds slower than the nearest car, which was Pedro Diniz, so why Olivier Panis was so extremely slow is unknown, especially as Olivier Panis did complete a flying lap, so why he's so far off the pace of the Saubers and his teammate is a complete mystery. And just as a reminder, both arrows have run out of engines, so they won't be taking part for the remainder of this season. Right now, this is interesting. Ross Braun is saying to, we should do a three-stop strategy. He's saying that's the quickest now. I do trust Ross Braun, although my trust of him has got kind of gone down this series due to a few issues regarding building parts and... Um, and reliability, of course, but a three-stop strategy, this could be genius. This could be, but I don't know because, as I say, Ross Bourne, he's done a few iffy things this season. So we'll have to find out. This could be genius. I mean, this could be another one of Ross Bourne's genius strategies, but I don't know. One thing I have made a mistake on is, um, is that during qualifying and practice, I used a third model engine. Now, of course, we ran out of third model engines. We used the last of them at the last race. So we were just using the leftover engine. And now I'm on the second model engines, but of course, they use more fuel. I don't know how much more fuel. That's the thing. So I've left the fuel settings as standard. I haven't calculated that out myself because we could end up accidentally doing what we did in Malaysia last year and running out of fuel. So... Which I did give Coulthard some more fuel, I'm that worried that we might, I mean, I did calculate it out, and even if we use 0.2 more litres of fuel a lap, we'll still have tonnes left over, but I just want to make sure, we're so quick anyway, I think we can carry excess weight, it does not matter. I mean, speaking of which, I mean, we're so much quicker than everyone else, Schumacher isn't going to get anywhere, now Frensen... Hopefully he can get somewhere. It said he holds the race lap record for this track. I don't know whether that's going to mean anything. I believe last time out he had a driver error. Hopefully he won't have that this time. And also, something was well, two things I need to amend from that Belgian uh, from the Belgian Grand Prix episode. One is that well I screwed over Hackner's chance of winning the championship. The second thing I need to amend is in that episode I said that D Mads suggested hashtag for Frentzen retiring was R.I.P. Frentzen, hashtag R.I.P. Frentzen. It's not. He actually suggested hashtag pray for Frentzen. So there you go, you can take your pick, really. You could either pray for Frentzen, but quite frankly, his season's dead anyway. So R.I.P. if you think his season's dead, or pray if you think there's still some hope. I mean, he has got a driver role next year as Ferrari's test driver, but... His career's dead, to be honest, unless he absolutely excels in, in testing. I don't think he's going to get a racing seat anytime soon, unfortunately. So there you go, it's hashtag RIP Frentzen or hashtag pray for Frentzen. You can mix and match, do whatever you want with that, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, and let's just head on to the start of the race, hopefully... Oh look, whoa, okay, I've, whoa, 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 I forgot about the graphics. And also, I forgot there's a Salba inside a Minardi. I didn't realise we were having... God, the game is... I don't know why, but ever since... For some reason, now the graphic settings have been downgraded. The game is running worse. Which makes no sense to me. But anyway, I think all the teams are running a sponsor-free livery day. Yeah, there you go. Benetton, their sponsors are incomprehensible. So, there you go. And also, it hasn't come up with the black bar at the bottom. I quite like that, actually. I like that the fact that Black Bar at the bottom hasn't come up. Although it does mean we don't know who's retiring right now. This is either a Lacey or Gene. Jesus! He went through so many cars to retire there. And that pixelated arrows is out. Okay. Yeah, actually, none of the graphics have come up. The replay, the R for replay in the top left, the race drivers, uh, nothing. I quite. It looks better. 
that, that black bar isn't at the bottom, but it does mean I've no idea who we're watching. I mean, the, the graphics are so bad, I, I, I don't know, this is a Prost. This could be Panis, he was at the bottom, although it's behind both Saubers, so maybe that's Zanardi. It's, oh, this is a Lacey, so a Lacey, I think this is going to be where he crashes out. And there you go, he just slides off, there you go. Whenever you want a Lacey. Still, he's still sliding, jeez, whoever thought gravel was that slippery. But there you go, I mean, I don't know what's going on here. Obviously, some Salvers jumped the grid, and so uh, did Aprost, at the very least. Um, I don't know why this, is ha this has happened more and more recently. I don't know why, but as you can see right now, this game is... Uh, I'm pretty certain this game is slowly dying on my PC. It, it just... There's been certain times I've wanted to record stuff, and it hasn't wanted to load. It's had difficulties loading, so... I think this game is literally just slowly dying in front of our eyes. Hopefully it will last that. Well, I say hopefully, it, it's, there's no reason why it should. I'll try and fix the graphics settings as well. Um, yeah, just basically, we are, but basically what I'm trying to say is right, is we are witnessing the death of a game in front of our eyes. We've also, we're also seeing a Ferrari and a BAR being held up by a Sauber. Okay, that Ferrari went through the Sauber. The, the annoying thing is I don't know which Ferrari that is. Um, I would like to think probably Schumacher because the Sauber started in Hacken and Space, which means it started in, on the first place grid slot and Schumacher is directly behind. So it's probably holding up Schumacher because he was the guy directly behind, which means Frenson once again, he's, he's done all right out of cars holding him up or holding up his teammates. And there's us just streaking away from everyone else. I cannot be bothered to watch a BAR try and pass a Sauber. Because that could take forever. Um, there you go, there's a Lacey and Gene out. If any other cars have an engine failure, then that could be the end of their season, quite honestly. We saw in Malaysia last year how many cars didn't even complete the first lap. How come Diniz is going so slowly all of a sudden? It likes to happen. There's also another thing that happens in this game a lot. There, there's often, more often than not one driver who's extremely slowly in a race. Which well, doesn't always happen, but right now it seems to be Deniz who's going extremely slowly. Although, he hasn't, oh, I was about to say he hasn't been lapped for a while. He has. Um, Coulthard's still behind Hackenham, but he's only, well, 7-8 seconds behind. Okay, right, right. We've got an influx of engine failures here. Trulli's out of a driver error. Good thing I didn't get him as my driver. Although, Coulthard's past Hakkinen. Oh, I don't think that'll make any difference. I still think Hakkinen will still win the championship. Even if Coulthard comes first, if Hakkinen comes second, he still wins the championship. I mean, if Hakkinen comes sixth, then Coulthard can still win the championship if he wins, but... That's interesting, Coulthard passing Hakkinen, I mean, good on you Coulthard, well done. Anyway, yeah, Trolley out with a driver error, and Damon Hill out with an engine failure, and so is Vert. So we might see both of those guys not start the next race, because they're only using Petronas and Peugeot engines. We saw they had supply issues come the end of last year, they may well do this year as well. Um... Anyway, yeah, and it's Coulthard, Coulthard staying ahead of Hakkinen. And remember, Coulthard's got more fuel on than Hakkinen. Uh, Raul Schumacher's run out of fuel. That's always an embarrassing way to retire, I think. Running out of fuel. I mean, for the entire team. Like, that's just a blunder and a half. And, anyway, actually, we're doing a three-stop strategy, aren't we? So I think Coulthard must have jumped Hakkinen in the pits. Of course, Coulthard's pitting one lap later, and strategically... That is better. Ah, we've inadvertently given Coulthard a better strategy. I think. Although, well, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But luckily, both of our guys haven't run out of fuel, which was a worry for me. But they haven't, which is good. Uh, Sarazan's out of an engine failure. So's De La Rosa. So both of those guys may not start the next race. I'm looking forward to the next race, and especially Japan. Just because I reckon so few people are going to finish. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, oh no, Lamarie out with an engine failure. 
Yeah, that's the problem with BAR, extremely quick team, but they've got rubbish engines. Which is which is part of the reason why Williams have overtaken them this season in terms of pace. And it's also going to be their downfall in, well, this race maybe, but certainly the last two races. Frenson's ahead of Schumacher. Well, a commentator's curse. Someone did comment. Someone did comment it, that commentator's curse. The second I mentioned that Frenson's ahead of Schumacher, oh no he isn't because Frenson has a suspension failure. So, hashtag RIP Frenson, hashtag pray for Frenson. I'll stick hashtag pray for Frenson on screen. Whatever, we'll alternate it. Do whatever you want in the comments. You can pray for him, but quite frankly, as you can see, his season is dead. Ferrari have got no intention of reviving his point scoring tally. That sentence didn't really come out right, did it? Revi well, you yeah, had no intention of reviving, you know, his F1 career hopes. I guess that's a better way of wording it. Um, but, but, you know, he's got two races left. Two races left. You never know, maybe he could win with his last two races. We've, the next race, Malaysia, we've never had a car finish at Malaysia. That could be for instance time, maybe. We'll have to see. Here, Schubacher is still in third. So what's Stephen Watson fourth, Villeneuve fifth, and Fizzy Keller in sixth. But look, the problem is, is for all the remaining guys, bar the Minardis, Schumacher and Watson, is their engines could go. Look, Villeneuve's could go, Fizzy Keller's could go, Barrichello's could, Sarlo's could. Uh, yeah, they all could really, apart from Supertech, Ferrari, and Mercedes, because they can all build a reasonable amount of engines. Arrows never can, and. Ever since last year, we never really saw it in 1999. Well, we did, but only with one Sauber, I believe. But in 2000 especially, we saw all sorts of engine supply issues. And um, Coulthard's still ahead of Hakkinen. Uh, we got Deniz... No, Fizzy Keller have a suspension failure. Whoa, okay, we're getting near the end of the race. I want to see Coulthard pass the line. I know we got some bad graphics, but... Who cares? This is a phenomenal moment, this is... I mean, well, let's 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 watch this. Right, where's where is Coulthard or Hakkinen, whatever? Because they're right next to each other. Look, there's Coulthard, there's Hakkinen. I don't know how Coulthard's done this, but he's been quicker than Hakkinen. This is exceptional. Although there's a Williams there, that must be of. I think that's Stephen Watson. That must be. There's some other slow people there. There's a Salber swerving around all over the place. Don't tell me Hakkinen's gonna pass. That Williams has screwed over Coulthard's race. Hakkinen has passed Coulthard. Or then what about the Sauber? Can the Sauber screw up Hakkinen? It could Coulthard could get past though. Coulthard's in the train. Oh my word. We, we're seeing some racing here. No, now the Sauber's let Hakkinen through and it's holding up Coulthard. The second I watch Coulthard is the second that his race win goes down the toilet. He was holding that w win for 40 laps. And then the Williams screws him over and now a Sauber does. So that's Deniz. And I believe Watson, who completely screwed over Coulthard's chance of genuinely winning a race. In my books, he won this race. Coulthard deserved to win the race. He was a quicker guy. Massive congrats to Coulthard there, because he basically won that race. Mika Salo's holding up Mika Hakkinen. There you go. But Hakkinen, sure, Coulthard deserved to win this race. He was the quicker guy, but Hakkinen... I thought the game crashed then, don't worry. But Hakkinen... He's going to come across the line to win the European Grand Prix and win the Drivers' Championship. We just saw Coulthard go by as well. That, in my eyes, Coulthard won that race. He really did. Coulthard, he was screwed over by Watson and Diniz. In my eyes, he won that race. I mean, look, we saw he was quicker from about two-thirds of that race. But hey, the, f the first pass to check a flag is the one who deserves to win, fundamentally. But it was just robbed. I mean, that's Pe Pedro Diniz and Stephen Watson. You favouriting... You, you, you favouritism right there. But anyway, Hakkinen has won the Drivers' Championship. That's what fundamentally matters now. So the, the Drivers' Championship and Constructors' Championship is over Hakkinen dominant fashion has won the Drivers' Championship. Michael Schumacher in third... Who cares? His championship charge is over. It's been over for a long time, actually. Stephen Watson in fourth. Uh, Jacques Villeneuve in fifth. And Mika Salo. He's taken the point. Mika Salo. Fantastic stuff from him there. 
Well done. And Olivier Panis was extremely slow in qualifying. Damn nearly got a point. And then Deniz, 15 laps off. What a waste of time, him being on the grid. Or for this race, at least. Um, but so many engine failures does beg the question, who on earth is actually going to finish the next race? Who's going to start the next race, even? Probably no one. But anyway, I mean, look, we got to celebrate. Hakkinen won the Drivers' Championship. It was never really in doubt. I know the longevity of the Drivers' Championship was increased. In Belgium, it was my fault. In Italy, it was just sheer unluck from Hakkinen. But he's won it. At, the, at the, our engine supplier's second home race, he's won it. So there you go. It's, I, did click and, I did click continue, but apparently not. Um, but as I say, this game is pretty much dying in front of us. I don't know why it just is. But um, Minardi dominates at Europe. That's what I like to see. There you go. A 1-2 victory. There you go. And, well, I mean, that's basically the season done, fundamentally. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we look at the Drivers' Championship. There you go. Hakkinen, 100 points. He's won the Drivers' Championship. Coulthard, a valiant attempt, but just wasn't quite there. But Coulthard has scored more points with Minardi this season than he did with Benetton last year, and amazingly, than he did with McLaren in 99. So, we're, we're more of a team player, or more of a... You know, we, we don't just favourite it. We don't just favourite Hakkinen like McLaren clearly did in 99, because Coulthard scored more points, although you could argue the Ferrari is more competitive in 99 than it is now, but anyway, so there you go, well, and Paul Stoddart, Paul Stoddart, well, I mean, I don't know what he was going on about, he, because Paul Stoddart, he wanted, um, Tarso Marquez to drive for 2001, he wanted Tarso Marquez, I don't know, he, I think he wanted some young Spaniard, I think he was called, I don't know, Fernando Alonso, something like that, load of rubbish, those guys are probably, Tarso Marquez, Fernando Alonso, good thing we didn't get them, because Coulthard and Hakkinen have dominated this year. Anyway, Constructor Championship dominated that. I mean, look, Ferrari are still somehow in second, even though Frentzen hasn't scored a point. Uh, McLaren are in third, but I mean, BAR, you do feel sorry for them. I just, I just feel sorry for them because they were so quick at the start of the year. Like, they were pretty much level on pace with Ferrari, not quite, but just off Ferrari's pace at the start of the year. But I don't know who their chief designer is, but he should be sacked because... He hasn't been able to keep up with Minardi, Ferrari, anyone really. And actually, Williams are only seven points off of third in the Constructors' Championship. And we see Williams are now, now that Supertech have overtaken the other teams, because really that's the thing that's driving Williams is their good engine supplier. So now that Supertech have overtaken all the other engines, maybe Williams could get third in the Constructors'. But I mean, as we saw, Supertech, even in 2000 in pre-season testing, we saw we saw the Williams was extremely slow in pre-season testing in 2000. I genuinely think it just takes the Supertech engines a long time to get up to speed. But when they do get up to speed, like now at the end of the season, just Williams are so much quicker than all the other teams. Well, bar Minardi and Ferrari, despite, you know, despite the Williams' other shortcomings, and there are quite a few on that car. And this is the one championship I could lose could lose this, but if we keep on getting 1-2s, there's no way we're going to lose it. The Manager's Championship. Although, I was leading the Manager's Championship come the start of the last race in 2000, and then both of our guys retired, and then we lost it. So you never know, we could still lose it again. Next race, Malaysia. Oh boy, what a, what a race this is. Oh, it was last year. It was certainly a race last year. Last year, so many guys retired within the first lap, it was hilarious. We may see a similar thing here next time, plus also, what was I gonna say? It's so also obviously we held the race lap, well no, not the race lap record, but we held the F1 lap record around here in 1999, so it has got some good memories for us actually, some very good memories, but we've never had a guy finish in at Malaysia. In 1999 we had a double retirement, that was back in the days when we did occasionally have double retirements, um, unfortunately. And uh, and in 2000, obviously, we completely messed up the fuel strategy. Going to make sure we don't do that. 
I really am going to make sure we don't do that. And uh, yeah, but Malaysian Grand Prix, very interesting race. And it could be very action-packed at the start if so many guys go out with engine failures. It could be very action-packed. I'm looking forward to it. And sure, the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship are done, but it doesn't mean we can't have some excitement in these last two races. So, I'll see you for them. So, I'll see you then.